All right, guys, I'm back. It's another day. Um, I went to a couple machine shops today to get that part done and check this out. I was gonna bring my camera, but I didn't wanna do it just because I don't wanna film someone that doesn't wanna be filmed. Um, I went to one place, I think it was Dave's Automotive. They said they wouldn't even do it at all. They actually told me the price that it's gonna cost, all the labor that goes into setting it up on their CNC machine and cutting that little spot out is not worth the money. So they don't do small jobs like that. So I said, okay, no problem. So I went to my second one, which is AMS. AMS is an auto machine specialist in Fresno. They wouldn't even, well, actually take that back. They said they were gonna do it, but they said 150 bucks an hour and that's minimum. They said it might take longer to do that one cut. So I was thinking maybe $200. I'm like, that's no, I'm not doing $200 for that cut. So I'm gonna get my personal Dremel out that I have. I'm going to put it in a vise. I'm actually probably gonna do it freehand for a little bit, but I'll put it in a vise and we're just gonna get to town and I'm gonna do it myself. I know it's not gonna be perfect cut, you know, and all that stuff, but honestly, if it saves me 150 plus 200 bucks, let's do that. It's very simple to see what you have to do. You basically just have to uh, get this lined up and you can see the excess that we have to cut out of this little bracket. So it shouldn't be that hard to do. I do have some really good bits. Uh, I think some carbine bits. So uh, I'm just gonna get started and hopefully knock this out. And maybe by the end of the night, I might have this wheel put on the bike. It might not be 100% with the brakes and all that stuff, but hey, I might be able to put this on tonight. So let's see. All right, guys, and there you have it. Um, I modified my bracket, probably took me 30 minutes, and I would honestly suggest you just do the same. Um, I used a little vise that I had sitting right here, and basically I have a Dremel with a carbine bit on it, and uh, basically just set this in here with a towel so I didn't mess this up and I pretty much went off with a little washer. I marked it with like a little uh, Sharpie. Not really a Sharpie, it was a uh, more like scratch the uh, aluminum surface. I probably went back and forth with it many, many times because I wanted to make sure I test fitted it correctly. And sure enough, if you want to see, it goes uh, right on there. So now we should be able to get this motor mounted up to the RX and it is nighttime, obviously. Uh, but yeah, let me get that tire mounted up, make sure it goes on perfectly fine and see if there needs to be any adjustments and let's go from there. So I have got the bike on the ground. That is the good thing. We got the wheel on, we got the chain on, we got everything like it looks good, right? Um, I wasn't exactly sure how the washers went into here. Um, I left one on the outside and then I left one on the inside. Everything seemed to line up pretty good. I have these little bolts push back as far as possible, but there's one problem I'm having. And that one problem is gonna be under here. Let's see if I can show you guys. So if you get under here, if you'll notice, that cable for that motor is touching on these bolts right here. And that doesn't look safe to me. So I think I might have to take this all back apart. You would think I would need a spacer, but I don't. So check this out. If you come back in here, if you can really see it, I don't know if my light's getting that, but there's a little spacer in between the rotor and the hub, and I left the spacer on. But if I take that spacer off, this will push the rotor slightly back a little bit more this way. And I think that's gonna help keep it away from here because it's really, really close onto this little bracket right here also. And I think it's gonna take it away from these bolts because these bolts right here are gonna cut through that like crazy. So the good thing is we got the bike all up and put together but it's not going to be moving for a while so i got some more stuff to do i'm going to take it all apart again and i'm going to remove that spacer for the brake so just in case you guys get this kit you want to take that spacer off but i will give you an update once i have that done all right so this is the washer i was talking about this was sitting behind the rotor i think if you remove this it's going to be so much better it's going to have more thread to go into the actual hub and it's going to give you that clearance for the the bolts for the rotor so take this off um, I highly suggest, I will update you in the video if this does cause a problem not being here, but for now, I think this needs to come off. All right, guys, so after putting it together, then taking it apart and then putting it back together, this is how it looks. Obviously, it looks the, completely the same, but I took that washer off that I was talking about for the rotor. The only thing now I noticed is that this brake is way on this side. So let me see if I can get a light for you and show you. So the tab for that is way, way off to the side. I want to say that one of the brake pads is probably rubbing because of that now. Not 100% sure. So I feel like, here's the thing. I feel like you need a spacer behind the rotor for sure, but I feel like you don't need um, 
like a huge spacer. The one that it came with is pretty thick. So I feel like if I had a smaller spacer, I think it would have been a lot better. But the good news is we'll get, we'll get onto the bike in a second, but I do want to show that I'm going to run my wires on the outside of the bike. And the reason why I had them up here is because I actually went riding the bike pedaling just to see if it'd work. Um, but my wires, I'm going to run them out here. And the reason why is once we get onto the bike, I will show you how close it comes to the rotor and everything like that. I'd rather run mine like this right underneath the super 73 logo. I'll just zip tie it right to the frame. There's a little hole right here. It does not help that I have pegs on here. That's kind of affecting it a little bit, but I'm going to run it right here. And then the rest of the wire is just going to go right in the middle of the frame. So it's going to go like this. I know you guys might say, oh, you should run on the inside of the frame, but no, I would rather not have any catastrophic problems with the bike. So that's how I'm doing mine, but let me get under it and I'll show you now how far away the, the bolts are from the cable. All right, so if you come under here now, you're gonna see how much farther the cable is away from those bolts. So nothing's gonna come in contact with it anymore. Honestly, I'd rather have a brake rotor slightly rubbing. It didn't feel too bad. I was able to pedal the bike anyway, um, then cut these wires down here. So that was my suggestion. You guys can do whatever you want, but uh, yeah. And honestly, I don't even know if these are put on the correct way. If you guys can see how those washers are, um, that's just how I kind of did my washers. There's Loctite on these two bolts right here. But overall, this is how the bike looks. And once we get our enclosure, we can start mocking up the battery and the controller and we can see exactly how everything's gonna fit, but we can't put anything on the bike until that's done. Now I could hook up everything outside of the bike just on the ground and then put the tire up, just make sure everything works. But I think I'm just gonna hook it all up and pray for the best. All right guys, so that's gonna wrap up the video. This thing is looking badass. It's actually pretty subtle. Um, I will say that I thought this motor was gonna be massively looking big compared to the stock one, but really when it's on a rim, yeah, it's bigger, but it's not as big as I thought it was gonna be. All right, so I appreciate you guys watching another video and we'll see you in the next one. I highly would suggest if you guys are really good with cars, knowledge, you have a Dremel, even if you don't have a Dremel, but you're really good at stuff, go buy a Dremel because machine shops around here, like I said, they're gonna charge you 150 an hour, 120 bucks an hour, whatever the machine shop is in your area. But yeah, it's gonna be precise. They're gonna put it on a CNC machine. It's gonna be cherry the way it's gonna be cut. But keep in mind, that's something you're gonna have to add on price-wise to this kit if you bought it. Me, I did not wanna pay over 50 bucks to have it done because it was one little, one little hole that needed to be grinded out. So I just got my Dremel. I didn't do a bad job on it. It's not 100% perfect, but it got the bike and the wheel together for zero dollars because i already had a dremel so something to think about see you guys in the next one appreciate you guys watching these videos and i'll keep updating you on this build because i am a new person when it comes to modifying electric bikes and i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are just like me so hey you're in for the journey just like i am so i'm gonna run in some some issues that some people might understand some people might not but hey i'm my own person you guys might run into the same thing so i'm just trying to help you guys out so See you guys later. Thanks. Peace.